I've always been the type who likes refining my home network, whether it's rearranging devices or upgrading hardware. I actually enjoy the process of making it all run smoother. Now, I need more floor space for a larger freezer in this room, so this is my perfect chance to do a serious overhaul. Move the rack to the wall, remove the gear that's no longer useful, optimize cable management, adjust my wireless coverage, and add some monitoring and automation. Let me take you through everything I did and share some tips I learned along the way. First, I cleared out hardware that had basically become deadweight. For example, I had the Meraki MS120 switch and the AMR33 access point. I originally got them from a Cisco Life event a few years ago. They were fantastic while the free 3-year license was active, but once it expired, they turned into a fancy doorstop. Without a paid license, they're just not functional, and paying for a license at home just didn't make any sense. Then there was my Cisco 3850 switch, a powerhouse in an enterprise environment, but a total energy hog in a home setup. It also added an unnecessary complexity. Replacing it with a unified POE switch instantly lowered my energy use, gave me a unified interface, and removed a layer of complexity. A tip here. Every so often, do an audit of your gear. If something is idle or locked behind licensing cost and you're not using it, let it go. Your rack will thank you. Next, I needed a good wall-mounted rack to free up the space on the floor for the freezer. I went with a StarTech 12U Heavy Duty wall mount rack. It arrives in four main pieces plus hardware, uses M6 cage nuts and screws, which I included, and the depth is also adjustable. And this is great if I decide to change things up a little bit later. It is important to note that the rack does not come with any wall mounting bolt or not, so you will need to get those yourself. In my case, the wall studs didn't quite line up perfectly with the rack's mounting point, so I ended up attaching a backing board to the studs first, then mounting the rack onto that. Now it is rock solid and exactly where I want it. A tip here, plan your mounting strategy in advance. If your studs won't cooperate, a backing board is your friend. Also, keep an eye on adjustable depth so you can accommodate future devices. With the rack now on the wall, I tackled cable management. I wanted to avoid electromagnetic interference, that is, EMI, so I kept my Ethernet cables at least 12 inches away from any electrical wiring. Where crossing was unavoidable, I did it at a 90 degree angle to reduce interference. This small details helped keep the network stable and signals clean. However, in my setup, my rack is mounted right next to an electrical panel, which is a giant source for EMI. Now, this was a fundamental error from the get-go. At this point, I'm just going to work with what I got, and maybe later down the line I might relocate the entire rack, or use a conduit. I also took the time to label all my cables. It might feel tedious in the moment, but it saves a world of trouble later on if you need to trace or reorganize cables. Instead of zip ties, I opted for velcro straps which makes it super easy to add or remove cables without cutting anything. This combination of clear labeling, spacing and velcro made my rack look cleaner and be much easier to maintain. A tip here. Good cable management isn't just about aesthetics. Keeping low voltage lines away from high voltage cables, label everything and using velcro to simplify future changes. The new rack lineup starts with a unified 24 port PoE switch in the first shoe, followed by my patch panel and then the UDM Pro, and then a tray for small device and finally the automatic transfer switch. The tray houses my Raspberry Pi running home assistant, my service provider gear and a few other small devices. Unfortunately, my UPS didn't fit the new rack, so I mounted it directly to the wall below. This arrangement ensures good airflow around the switch. It keeps frequently touched devices like the UDM Pro within easy reach and leaves the ATS at the bottom, out of the way but still accessible if needed. For wireless coverage, I originally had two U6 long range access points, which worked well for the broader coverage. I decided to try a unified U7 Pro in wall access point on my second floor, hoping it would blend into a standard Ethernet outlet space. But I discovered a few issues. 
The U7 Pro in wall doesn't offer a wired pass-through option like some U6 in wall variants do. It also uses a four-directional antenna, which is great for a single room or a single floor, but not ideal when I need to cover three floors and possibly some outdoor areas with just two access points. After a few days, I realized it didn't provide the multi-floor reach I wanted, so I switched it out to a ceiling-mounted U7 Pro instead. I placed it on my top floor unfortunately in a closet to keep it out of sight. That's not ideal for signal, but drywall only knocks down the signal by a few decibels, which is acceptable in my setup. Ideally, you want to mount it openly. Meanwhile, my basement AP is out in the open with fewer obstructions. I also customized my Wi-Fi channels and power levels. For 2.4, I set the basement AP to channel 1 and the top floor AP to channel 11 to avoid overlap. I keep my 2.4 power at a medium because 2.4 is congested anyways, and I only need it for devices that can't use a 5 or a 6 band. Blasting 2.4 further would just add interference and coverage I don't really need. For a 5 and 6, I pick the cleanest channel in my environment. My 6 GHz band is set to auto with a high power since I'm one of the few in my area using the Wi-Fi 6 and 7 channel, and I don't have many devices on it yet. The U7 Pro can do 2.5 gigabits per second, but my PoE switch doesn't support 2.5. It does support 10 gig though, but that port isn't PoE powered, which means I would need to get a PoE injector to be able to use that. I don't want to have to go through that hassle right now, 1 gig is fine for me as it is. On my main Wi-Fi, I only have 5 and 6 gigahertz enabled for high security, high performance devices. My OVT network has 2.4 and 5 for everything else. I aim for around negative 6 to 7 decibels in most areas. The number fluctuates with neighborhood and random factors, but if I can maintain that or better, I'm happy. The garage is the only weak spot due to insulation and concrete walls, but the devices there don't need high bandwidth, so I'll leave it as is or add another AP later down the line if needed. A tip here, different AP styles fit different scenarios. If you only have two APs for a large or multi-floor area, a forward antenna in-wall unit might not cut it. You might want something with an omnidirectional like the U6 ceiling access point. Also, don't be shy about tweaking channels and power levels to minimize interference. I also segmented my network into main, IoT, and guest VLANs. This way, IoT devices, often less secure or chatty, stay isolated from my main network resources. It is a simple but effective step to improve overall security and performance. With the U6 Pro on the top floor in a closet and another AP in the basement, coverage remains stable despite the in-wall approach not working out. Mixing different AP designs like an U6 Long Range or a U7 Pro lets me adapt my coverage to each floor's layout and needs. My on read server is a big part of my setup. Over 23 terabytes of storage, running Plex, camera feeds and even more. Unfortunately, it's too large to fit inside the new rack. Eventually, I'll look for a smaller case or rearrange the gear so it can slide right in. For now, a floating shelf beneath the rack keeps it stable off the floor and within easy reach. When it comes to wired connectivity, I'm a firm believer in maximizing speed and offloading as much traffic as possible from the wireless network. My policy is simple. If your device has a network port, it gets wired. This approach not only ensures the fastest and most reliable connection for those devices, but also frees up the wireless network for devices that truly need them. To support this, my entire setup is wired with CAT6 cabling, which supports up to 10 gig speeds across the entire house. Within the rack itself, I've built a 10 gig backbone between key components. The network switch connects to the UDM Pro router using a fiber link via SFP modules, ensuring a high speed and interference free connectivity. There's also a 10 gig link between the UDM Pro and my on read server, which powers my media and storage needs. And finally, I have a 10 gig direct connection from my office workstation to the network switch, allowing for a lightning fast data transfer when working on large files or media project. For my laptop setup in the office, I've included a 10 gig docking station. This gives me the flexibility of a fast wired connection when docked, with all the benefits of speed and stability that comes with it. In general, 
Prioritizing wide connection for devices like my server, workstation and smart home ops ensures I get the most out of my 10 gig infrastructure, leaving my wireless network less congested for mobile and IoT devices. It's one of those investments that pays off in overall network performance and reliability. I've also added some smart automation. I installed a Zemi Smart Wi-Fi over Mata switch with a SmartThings motion sensor and temperature sensor. Now the light powers on when I enter and off when I leave. No more fumbling with switches if my hands are full. Along with that, I placed the switch bot up here which gives me a quick local readout of temperature and humidity. If the room ever heats up too much, perhaps from extra gear or the freezer, I'll know right away. I've done a lot here, but I can still refine things. If I notice weird latency or dropouts, I can reroute cables or consider conduit. If the basement warms up as I add more gear, maybe I'll add a fan or a portable AC. In fact, I do have an exhaust fan on my rack right now, but it's actually powered off because it makes too much noise. My setup can adapt as my needs evolve. After all, I enjoy these upgrades. This project wasn't about fixing something broken. It was about taking a decent setup and making it better. Reclaiming floor space for the freezer, removing gear that was license locked or too power hungry, setting up a well-organized rack with good airflow, labeling cables, finding the right EP combination for my Wi-Fi needs, introducing automation and environmental monitoring, and creating a flexible plan for the future. I hope this walkthrough inspires you if you're considering a similar upgrade. Even small improvements can add up, and it's satisfying to see everything come together. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, suggestions, or want more details on anything like the Unread server or my U7 Pro experience, drop a comment down in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your own upgrade stories. Here's to enjoying the process of making our setups even better, one step at a time.